How many Liberal Party fundraisers has the Speaker held in the Speaker's dining room, and on what dates did these fundraisers occur? I know the uh, member for Watson was late into the Parliament at nine o'clock this morning, and so he probably did not hear the statement that I read on that occasion, so I'll read it again. All members are entitled to use their suites for their own purposes, but of course not for illegal purposes. That is the answer to your question. Uh, if I can refer to practice on page 179, where it states, for many purposes, the Speaker is in effect the Minister for the Department of the House of Representatives and jointly with the President of the Senate is Minister for the Department of Parliamentary Services. As you, as you would appreciate, Ministers are not able to hold political functions in departmental resources. I ask again, how many Liberal Party fundraisers has the Speaker held in the Speaker's dining room and on what dates did these fundraisers occur? I have said that members may use their suites for whatever purposes they see fit. That includes you but they may not use it for an illegal purpose. Therefore, it is not the business of um, either executive government or um, others to ask members the purposes for which they use their offices. That is the rule. How much has the Liberal Party paid on each occasion for the use of the Speaker's dining room for fundraisers and has the ordinary $600 venue hire fee, which applies to all private dining rooms, been among the payments made? I will not engage in debate on the question. I have made the ruling. I have, sa I have said that members may use their offices for their own purposes. Madam Speaker, I wish to raise a matter of privilege. In recent days, there have been reports that the Speaker has used her Parliament House dining room to hold Liberal Party fundraisers. There is a question as to whether the Speaker or the Liberal Party paid for the use of the Speaker's dining room for these party political functions. I ask the Speaker to investigate whether this constitutes an improper inference with the operations of the House of Representatives, such as to require that the matter be referred to the Privileges Committee for investigation and report. Yeah. I would simply say to the member for Watson, he is perfectly at liberty under Standing Order 216 to write to the committee himself, and I would recommend he do so. Under, under practice, it indicates that I should first raise the issue with you in the House, which I have now done, uh, and then there is an option for an individual to have ready a resolution to move immediately, which under practice does not require a seconder. Is that the path you wish me to choose? I have said, under the Standing Orders 216, you are perfectly entitled, and I am following a ruling made by my predecessor, the member for Chisholm, uh, and that is the ruling, so you no longer have the call. Madam Speaker, I seek the call. You can seek the call, but I recommend you do precisely as I said. I seek the call. You have the call. I move that the following matter be referred to the Committee of Privileges and Members' Interests. Whether the Speaker's use of her Parliament House dining room for Liberal Party fundraisers constitutes an improper inference, interference with the operations of the House of Representatives. There are venues for hire all around the building. The Speaker's office is not one of them. When I first heard these allegations, I made the response that I believed your position would be untenable if it were true, because I could not believe, for all the arguments that I've had with the Chair, that your office would become outsourced to the Liberal Party as a fundraising venue. For all the arguments we've had, it never occurred to me it never occurred to me that partisanship would go to effectively donating a venue to the Liberal Party. Why is it that the Speaker is unwilling to let the Parliament know how many times her office has been given to free for fundraising objects within the Liberal Party? Yeah. And I've got to say, there is a reason at the moment around Australia why attention has turned to Liberal Party fundraising methods. Yeah, yeah. There is a reason all around Australia why we are starting to find out, and I'm glad the member for Dobell is still here in the chamber, why we are realising different methods that have been adopted by the Liberal Party in fundraising operations. Yeah. To think that it goes to the office that is ostensibly the office that is meant to be independent within this parliament is extraordinary. I find it a bit rough to be lectured on morality from you, the member for Watson. And I call the Honourable the Leader of the House. Madam Speaker, I would ask you to reconsider the statement that you made about There's no the point of order. The Leader of the House has the seat. I have sat here and accepted the words that were said about me. Now, the Leader of the House has the call. You, you have questioned you have question his morality. You have questioned his morality and, and you have engaged in debate. Seat. Will resume her seat. You just don't know how to behave, do you? Member for Rankin, Member for Lingiari, Deputy Leader of the Opposition, 
just extraordinary. You have no manners at all. The Leader of the House has the call. If this is meant to disrupt debate, then I'll accept the point of order. Madam Speaker, I have a point of order on two grounds. One, you clearly intervened and participated in the debate. Secondly, you clearly reflected on a member of this House. Any member, any member of us, any one of us would have been asked to withdraw and would have, and you should comply, Madam Speaker, with respect by the same rules that apply to every other member. Very Except clearly, me, you should withdraw that comment. Except me, apparently. The Leader of the House has the call. We will not be supporting this motion under any circumstances. The reasons that we will not be supporting this motion are that this is a motion about smear and innuendo directed at the Speaker's office. Smear and innuendo is the Labor Party's first weapon of choice. The question is that the motion be put. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. I think the ayes have it. Is a division required? Yes. Ring the bells for four minutes. Don't you dare compare me to the Don't you dare. Are we? We're having a campaign. Nothing but a campaign against the Speaker. It's been from day one. The result of the division is ayes 54, noes 83. The question is therefore negative.